Sophie Hardy and the Battle of the Myriad by M. R. Dale. Narrated by Leona Hall. Chapter 6 A Last Dose of Normality. When Sophie woke the morning after, she rubbed her eyes and, once again, for that split second just after waking up, everything seemed normal in her life. As what was now normality started to set in, though, she rolled over and saw Clara sprawled out on the floor still fast asleep. Sophie turned onto her back and stared at the ceiling and heard her stomach rumble. She didn't know what she wanted to do. There was still no school until at least next Monday. The Encantado wasn't giving anything away. Miss Sisson still hadn't got back in touch and neither had Kingsley with anything exciting. She rubbed her eyes. Her dad popped into her head and the feeling that wasn't rumbling returned to her stomach, which took the hunger sensation away. This time, there was no distraction coming from anyone else to take it away, so Sophie had to make her own before she started getting upset like she had nearly done in the kitchen yesterday. So, she got up and went back to the kitchen to see if she could at least find some nourishment for breakfast. Passing through the living room, she saw Lizzie, still asleep on one settee, and Mum, still parked on the other, also asleep, and snoring. Getting a bowl out of the cupboard for some cereal, it dawned on Sophie that no shopping had been done since the vanishing. With a feeling of inevitability, she opened what was the cereal cupboard to find it bare. Lizzie must have devoured the last of it during the night. With three growing girls and one adult who never left the house to feed, the food had finally run out and there was no danger of Mum making the effort to go to the shops, so it was up to Sophie. Thinking that Lizzie and Clara wouldn't appreciate being woken up and that there was no point bothering Mum, Sophie took the little money she could find in Mum's purse, got dressed and walked into the village for supplies. As she made her way out of the flat, down the lift and past the houses on the Tuesday morning, there was the normal crowd of adults on their way to work. They were all either passing by in self-driving cars or waiting for buses to take them to their jobs. Every one of them that Sophie saw was distracted by a screen of some description. They were either zoned out on their implants as the world passed them by or watching a communal television screen that had been installed on the buses. Try as she might, Sophie couldn't get her head round it. According to the news, the devices that everyone was using were potentially responsible for the most catastrophic event the world had ever seen, but that didn't bother people. Sophie had convinced herself that her use was warranted as she knew full well that the implant in her head hadn't been the root cause of any disasters. But what about everyone else? Were they that reliant now on this aspect of their life that they simply couldn't give it up, even though it had supposedly done harm to people? Why weren't people making a stand against it rather than just posting the odd message online that criticised Shadow? They could be on the streets protesting and refusing to wear the implants, but that seemed like too much effort to the adults, and so in their zombie-like state they stayed. A man brushed past Sophie, half zoned out while walking his dog. He had no idea that Sophie was there, nearly knocked her into the road and into the path of a car, whose driver was completely oblivious to anything outside her own world. Continually astonished, Sophie eventually arrived at the local shop, a small supermarket that stocked the essentials, and started loading up one of only two trolleys left in the shop. Sophie weaved in and out of the shoppers, who clearly weren't phased anymore by the fact that a ten-year-old was buying the shopping by herself. Sophie's mind wandered again. She wasn't sure if she, Clara and Yasmin had aged in the ageing. They all felt slightly different, but they weren't sure if they had grown or not, as they were zoned out at the time. They had decided to maintain the illusion that they'd aged like everyone else and so referred to themselves as Eleven when meeting anyone they didn't know. As she reached the bread shelf, the main reason Sophie had come out so that she could have toast when she got home, she found herself studying which bread to buy when she heard a soft voice behind her. Startled, Sophie turned round to see who it was. Hi, it's Sophie, isn't it? A kind-looking lady asked. Sophie had no clue who it was or how she might know this person and so stumbled over her words a little. Er, uh, yes, she replied. The lady had light brown hair which was cut to her chin, blue eyes and a gentle smile that made Sophie feel at ease. Sorry, you must be wondering who I am. Random woman starts talking to you in a supermarket while we both look at bread, she said, smiling again and reaching out to take a loaf. Sophie smiled a little and felt very at ease with the woman. 
It was the first person who had spoken to her recently who didn't seem to feel sorry for her, Yasmin, or wanted to offload their problems onto her, everyone else. My name is Miss Hale and I think I'm taking over your class when the school restarts, the lady said. It occurred to Sophie then that she had thought about going back to school, but not to what she was actually going back to. Mrs Phoenix had gone and Sophie had spent quite a bit of time thinking about her. As Sophie thought about her again, the sinking feeling returned to her stomach. So, Sophie used this Miss Hale as a distraction. Are you? She said. Sophie thought that Miss Hale must think she was quite mad, but the stomach-turning feeling had already eased, and so the perceived madness had done its job. Yes, I know one of the governors at your school, and they told me that your class would need someone new, and I offered to cover. They said that you are desperate to learn about the mythicals from long ago. Sophie's mind was racing, and she was only half listening. A million scenarios ran through her brain about what school was going to be like. She then thought about Mrs Jones, who, she had been told by Yasmin's mum, had been one of the victims of the vanishing as she had loaned her implant to Mrs Tabard to ring Sophie's parents on that fateful Friday afternoon. The feeling returned, so Sophie again thought about something else. Weirdly, what would Mrs Tabard think of someone else covering the class was Sophie's next thought, but Miss Hale could see she was distracted and snapped her out of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to upset you, she said softly. It's OK. I I'm sorry, how do you know me? was Sophie's next random thought, but this one left her mouth without her engaging her brain. Know you? The great Sophie Hardy? Everyone knows you, my dear, Miss Hale replied with her biggest smile yet. Sophie found herself smiling back, one at her temporarily forgetting about her internet fame, and two because Miss Hale had referred to her as great. Sophie could see that they would get on well. Coming back down to earth, Sophie realised that someone else at home might have woken up and be questioning where she was. She felt like she had a million questions for Miss Hale, as an adult who may be able to help her with everything she was going through. But Sophie couldn't think of anything other than getting back home with the food and continuing the role of adult in supporting her sister and cousin. I'm sorry, I... Sophie began. Need to get home. It's fine, Miss Hale replied, understanding. Sophie smiled, nodded, and put the loaf of bread she had chosen into the trolley. I look forward to working with you, Sophie, Miss Hale said, and Sophie could see that she genuinely meant it, thus putting Sophie at ease and in immediate admiration for this new teacher. There was finally a small, tiny speck of normality in Sophie's life, something that she hadn't felt for well over a week now, and she liked it. Two weeks ago, she just wanted excitement. Now... She was just grateful for something that was normal. I'll teach you about all the things the others wouldn't teach you, and much more, Miss Hale continued. Mythicals deserve to be respected like everyone else. Miss Hale was sounding too good to be true, but Sophie couldn't get her thoughts clear. There were too many of them. Before Sophie could even attempt to organise her mind, the red light started flashing in the corner of her eye, indicating a new message. Without saying goodbye, Sophie pushed the trolley away and left Miss Hale stood holding her own loaf of bread in the aisle of the supermarket. Sophie felt slightly better at knowing what her return to school might look like, as that was one less worry to dwell on. Opening the message, Sophie immediately saw that it was from Yasmin, and reading the contents of it sent Sophie into a mix of panic and excitement. All it said was, she's back. Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by Emma Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels or if you would like to purchase a copy of the book, then be sure to check out our website www.sophiehardysaga.com Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy.